Welcome back to the Creator Club career mode here on FIFA 22. Chesnoid FC, our Premier League again. And six games into the new season, we're top half of the Premier League. It's not very often we've been able to say that in this save, mainly because we spent two years in the Championship. And the first year of the Premier League was mainly spent in the relegation zone. So, <clears throat> mainly spent bottom of the bloody table. So we shall try our damnedest to stay top half today. We face Crystal Palace, who are 10th. To begin today, they are the side that picked us to second place in the championship in season two and got automatic promotion ahead of us. We weren't quite able to see it through. Love to get a win against them today. Liverpool away is the second game and then Southampton at home. Obviously not expecting much from Anfield whatsoever. And then uh, Southampton have actually had a very strong start to the season up in fifth. But Brighton had had a strong start to the season and we were able to nearly beat them yesterday. We should have beaten them yesterday 2-0 up, but they pulled it back to 2-2 in the last minute. So we'll try and get some decent points again today and maintain that top half position. To start off with, I just want to steer clear of the relegation zone. If we can get to Christmas and we look comfortable, then we can set our sights slightly higher up. At your request, Riley McGree has moved to the right-hand side of the front three. Ben Brereton Diaz has dropped to the bench and Billy Gilmore has been instated in that central midfield role alongside Lewis Ferguson. That's from your feedback in yesterday's episode. So we'll see how that works for us today. But we'll start with Crystal Palace at home and we shall take it game by game. And hopefully... It could be a decent season for us. Drop the video a like, please, continually, if you're enjoying this save. Thank you for the support on Season 4 so far. It's been fantastic. Do please make sure you hit the thumbs up button. It really helps the channel out and push the content to new people as well. And, of course, if you're not subscribed, then make sure you do. So you won't miss out on any further content. You definitely won't if you hit that notification bell. Tonight, Football Manager Twitch, the Cambridge United journey begins. You will not want to miss it. Link in the description down below to my Twitch channel. The highlights will go up on the second channel, the first episode of which will go live here as well, just to try and push the content to more people. So do make sure you come and join me on Twitch tonight from 6.30pm. Of course, there's the My Player continuing on Facebook every single weekday, 2pm. There's a link in the description to that too. Right, all of the plugging done. Let's go and beat Palace, shall we? It's hammering it down with rain here at the newly built Patreon Park. They've Daniel Asur, Joachim Anderson, Musa Niakite, and Nathaniel and Nathan Ferguson at left back. Their front three is Lemiras, Martin Terrier, and Oli Watkins. Terrier should be left wing. Watkins should be at striker. I've seen a few comments saying that uh, I should use the second controller and change the lineups, which is what we used to do when the issue was uh, kind of presenting itself two or three years ago. Unfortunately, I only have the one controller for my PlayStation 5, and I don't really want to spend 60 quid on a new controller just to change some lineups on FIFA, to be completely honest. So we're going to stick with it for the moment. I just wanted to address that because I've seen it in the comment section a few times. I have replied to comments, but obviously uh, they're not getting seen by everyone. So I thought I'd mention it in a video as well. So if you want to adjust the lineups in your saves because they're not right, then you can use a second controller as well. It's certainly a, a method that you guys can use in your saves, provided you have a second controller available to you. I unfortunately don't. So we have to just kind of suck it up for now and hope that it's fixed sooner rather than later. Right, Crystal Palace in the Premier League then. We are ninth, they are 10th. The battle of mid-table begins. Vogel in there to Ferguson. We have one of the best defensive records in the league, supposedly. When has that ever been the case? I think even in our promotion season at the championship level, we certainly... Never had one of the best defences in the league. Just trying to get it back on Riley McGree's left foot to try and stand up into the box. But I perhaps should trust that right foot a little bit more. Randy and Tech is going to get into the box here. We're going to trust his right foot here. And perhaps I should have tried to drill that to Ennis Bardi in the middle instead. All kind of going between player and goal and splitting the middle. Not the best of shots from Randy and Tech's right foot. But he's been bright so far this season continuing on his form from last year and hopefully he can do that all season long just like he did in the championship and he'll be a great goal scorer for us this season we hope we pray Riley McGree causing some problems on that left hand side at the moment got Jaden Bogle pushing forward from right back and we'll whip it we'll take the corner we'll still try and look for this first goal early doors in this game we'll look for Randy and Tekka we might find him here we have done oh, but it's tamely wide Watkins 
essentially to Martin Terrier. And wide to Ollie Watkins again. Watkins is definitely a player that has the sort of attributes that could suit a left wing role. Just by default, his position should see him central. But he definitely could do a job for them out wide. And Terrier is not exactly bad in front of goal. So it's even though it's not the way that they should be lining up, it's certainly a lineup that could cause me some problems if they're able to utilise those players and their attributes well enough. Mainly, Ollie Watkins' pace and Terrier is not that bad in the shot. I've not been able to really pick them apart. Neither side have really tested the other's goalkeeper yet, which is frustrating. Half an hour in here, you can tell it's kind of two sides that have some quality, but not masses of it. Nikita into read about as if to build on the point I made in the last highlight. 50% possession apiece. No shots on target apiece. It's been one of those kind of games. If there is to be a goal in this game, you feel like that one singular goal would probably be the one that wins it. And it might be Crystal Palace from the spot. Be even more typical if the only shot on target in the game comes from the penalty spot. Itakura went to step for it and, well, it's one of the more obvious penalties you'll see given in any given fixture. It's Ollie Watkins to step up for them. It's saved! It's saved by Hredetsky twice! Even when there is a shot on target, it still doesn't go in the back of the net. Oh, Lukas Hredetsky deflected off Van Ersten out for a corner. Yes, Lukas, proving once again that we made the right decision to bring him in goal. Will Hughes with the delivery away by Iago. And we look like we'll hold out at nil-nil till half-time. That one of the best defensive records in the league stat. Proving to still be the case even if we give away penalties. Maybe. Never mind. I take all of it back. We're 1-0 down. Typical. Down the line. Kasun into Nteka. Looking for Kasun again. Or look for Nteka again. Breaking into the box. Try for the shot. Cross goal. It's a good save by Maximenko. Just to get enough to turn it around the post. And his buddy across to take the corner. We'll look for... Randy and Tekker again. Can he get the run on the defender here? He can! It's a brilliant save and it won't quite fall for me again. Oh, their keeper's doing wonders at the moment! And we cannot get the ball in the back of the net. Itakura trying to make up for giving away the penalty. And the left footed strike hits the outside the post. After the keeper it hits Randy and Tekker's header from the corner onto the post. Everything we try to get a goal here against Crystal Palace won't quite go in. How is that for dominating your opponent there? Iago rising all over the back of the Crystal Palace man. But still, Crystal Palace have possession and they push. Itagura stepping in again really nicely done looking for Kasun. Here we go. This could be good. This could be really good if I can just get past Yoroki Manderson, which I can't do. Ferguson's done nicely though. Look for Andy and Tekka through the gap. I think he's just on side here. Probably going to have to look for some support. Oh, trying to turn it home with Ennis Bardi and it's blocked well by a defender. We're certainly having the better of the play in the second half, aren't we? But no goal to show for our pressure yet. And Kasun is on the run. And we'll look to feed him in down the left-hand side. It's a lovely ball by Billy Gilmore. Oh, and the cross is blocked by Lassur. Not able to whip the ball into the box the way that we want to. It's a free kick for handball, in fact, as they now make a change. Right, we'll look for Randy and Tekka towards the back post. Will Hughes has gone off and Ferreira is on in his place. Lifted in. Oh, Bardi with the header. We find a teammate, but he's put it over the bar. Everything we throw at Crystal Palace doesn't go in. Ferreira. Out to Ollie Watkins. Ferreira's there again. Quickly into Martin Terrier. They're going to go on the overlap, aren't they, with Ollie Watkins? Yes, they are. Does look promising. You're right, Derek Ray. I don't like it. They are. Itakura does well. Oh, I have to rely on Hredetsky still to make the save. We'll bowl this out quickly. Hopefully he's got a decent throw on him. I haven't actually tested his throw yet. It's not amazing. Note to self, don't try long throws with Lukas Hredetsky. Right, 15 minutes to go. I don't think you can deny the fact that we've deserved a point from this game, the way that we've played so far. There's that 88 stand tackle for Billy Gilmore coming into effect and showing itself very nicely indeed. And it's an excellent through ball. Randy and Tech is in behind. Surely this is 1-1. It is indeed a deserved equaliser. And that has been coming with the run of play, most certainly. Randy and Tekka, oh, exhausted. And he might well be. We've tried everything in this second half to get in front, putting... 
everything on the line, and finally it's paid off. Joachim Anderson, Terrier is off, and Jordan Ayew is on. So the game definitely recognises what players should be in that position when they bring players on off the bench, because they've just brought a striker on to play at, in that striker spot. It's just the starting lineups that are affected. Don't understand what the issue might be in the coding, but still, hopefully it's fixed sooner rather than later. Here's Ollie Watkins out in that wide roll again. Now, don't foul in this time. I've made two changes. You see, Kiusta is now on the field. Riley McGree has been moved centrally, and I took Ennis Bardi off. Moved Riley McGree from right wing to Cam and brought on uh, Jaden Braff on the right hand side. And I've also taken off Lewis Ferguson and brought on Kiusta, as you saw. He's now playing in that right centre mid role. We'll look for Jaden Braff down the line here. Get it under control. Support is here from Jaden Bogle. Riley McGree now a little bit deeper and a little bit more central than he was. Oh, Billy Gilmore not really with the space there. Lovely little bit of footwork though to work the ball about. Kasun into Randy and Tekka. Here is Billy Gilmore. You see the movement being made by Riley McGree. Unfortunately, his first touch lets him down. It would be practically the last kick of the game if we find a winner now. I'd love to find a winner now. Kasun is in. And it's a corner. Oh, come on. Now would be gorgeous. Now would be amazing. Now would be the best time ever. Over the bar from Kasun. It's not to be. A point only from this game against Crystal Palace. But we absolutely deserved to get the victory. Or would have deserved the victory. Should we have gotten it. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. A point only against Crystal Palace. But both sides fought hard. To be fair, they defended very well. The woodwork came to their rescue a couple of times, but the keeper made some good saves as well. Nine shots from us, six from them. They had a lot more of the ball and played uh, 114 passes to our 90-something, but still, we deserved that point at the very least, so please not to have lost it. We are, this year, seemingly drawing the games in Season 1 we would have lost and winning the games in Season 1 we might well have drawn. So... It's signs of massive progress at the club. But to be fair, this, the side that we had in Season 1 was not even close to the side that we have right now. Um, Watkins is an excellent player. And we have to give him credit for what was a very good finish into the top left-hand corner of our goal. Up next for us, after an international break, will be a trip to Anfield. You can see how tight the league is, though. We're one point of Manchester United in 5th and one point above Manchester City in 10th. They've had an awful start to the season. Liverpool line up with Allison in goal in their usual 4-3-3. Trent, Matip, De Ligt and Zinchenko. Mikel Marino, Fabinho and Thomas Müller. With Mo Salah, Kelechi and Sadio Mane as the front three. Of course, Virgil van Dijk was sold to Barcelona in this save in the most recent summer transfer window. With plenty of options on the bench, including in Nasiri and Chira Immobile if things don't work with Kelechi. Through the middle in the false nine roll. Really strong squad for Liverpool still. In this save, four years in. It's going to be tough. As you might well expect it to be. To beat them here today. Big away day, this. And he rides the challenge of Jaden Bogle. Finds Kletchi Muller. Kletchi Muller. It's just everything you expect from Liverpool, really. Thomas Muller with the captain's armband at Anfield now. And our big away day. Hasn't necessarily, no, oh, that's a word, necessarily started the way that we would have liked it. Thought I might have gotten it off Mane there and then just, um, well, I mean, you can't defend that, can you? <laughs> you quite simply can't defend it. <sighs> Good finish, though. Thomas Muller, exceptional as ever. Bogle. Norwich are second currently. Liverpool top the table, but Norwich City are currently second in the Premier League. Wow. Oh, lovely footwork from Riley McGree. And Nteka just needs to force his way around Joel Matip. Trent gets there, but here's Kasun. He's got four-star weak foot, though he is left-footed. Unfortunately, couldn't find the way past the man there. Oh, now Mo is going to go for a run. It's going to be really tough to beat Liverpool today. It's going to be tough to even get a draw against Liverpool today, especially when they go 1-0 up early doors like that. There was the call in the comment section, and actually, I'd forgotten that we decided we were going to do this. Oh, it's going to be a free kick for handball right on the edge of the box. Great position for Trent Alexander-Arnold. This could be two. Uh, holding my breath. I still haven't breathed. 
Get the ball away! Well done, Itakura. Oh, Jesus Christ. And out. Now, what I was mentioning before Trent gave me a heart attack was... Oh, Kalecci, it's a great finish. 2-0 Liverpool. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh, it's to be expected, I suppose. Uh, in the Brentford save last year, we decided that in our... In any given series, in our first, as a smaller club, in our first year at Premier League level, whether that be coming up from the Championship or being a newly promoted side, any any side's first season in the Premier League, basically, we would sim the big team in a game in a month where there were more than three games. We would sim the big teams and play the smaller teams, the relegation candidates, those in the lower half of the table, in that first year, and that is something I'd forgotten about in oh, chop from Zinchenko. Something I'd forgotten about uh, for this save, but certainly something I, now that I've been reminded of it, I would like to implement. Obviously, there's only three games this month, so we're playing Liverpool anyway. Oh, I think he's well offside there. So we're playing Liverpool anyway, but in the coming months for the remainder of this season, if we play, say, or if we have Manchester United and three sides from the lower half of the table or just three smaller sides, then we will play the three smaller sides and sim the big team just for this first season back at Premier League level. Then when we're looking to uh, to get ourselves to the upper reaches of the table, we will lean towards playing the bigger sides and simming the smaller. Just so it gives a, a more realistic display of what the league should look like because, in general, you expect... Normally, in FIFA, when you play the big sides to have an easier game, and then when you play the smaller sides, you have a more difficult game. Iago's going to try and get away from Fabinho there. Oh, not much of an advantage that, was it, ref? Fabinho might find himself picking up a booking there. Oh, but Mo Salah's going to get away from me here. Thankfully, Kudetsky makes the save. Uh, Liverpool not pulling any punches here. They're top of the table, and they mean business, rather evidently. 2-0 up. Could have been a man down with Zinchenko. With his chop, Fabinho is now walking a tightrope on a yellow card as well. Looking for Riley McGree in behind here, though. Trent's with me. He's quick, but he's not rapid. And Riley McGree's done really well. And out wide on this far side is Kasun. He's yet to score for me. Well, quite simply, he hasn't been able to make his mark an attack in this game, Stuart. Yeah, he struggled to get on the ball. And that's still the case. You can argue the service hasn't been good enough. But I don't think his movement has been dynamic as it normally is in them. But if they can get away with more Marino, the half, Fabinho again, they're just the drifting the between the lines of our midfield and defence there. Well, three. Oh, Maneta Kalecci, it's on his left. Fabinho's there, and it is three. Fabinho drifts all the way between the lines of midfield to defence, and then the line between defence and goalkeeper as well. We are getting our bum holes handed to us here. Liverpool are. A long way away from where we are right now, talent-wise, ability-wise, expectation-wise. There's still a lot of work to do before we challenge at the top end of the table. A lot of work to do. And Teka. Can Kasun get a shot away this time? He can. It's through Alisson. But Alisson recovers. We'll still be 3-0 down at half-time. Alisson's furious about something. I'm furious about everything that's happened in this game so far, I think. <laughs> Cross to Van Ersden. Out to Iago. Uh, it's going to take a hell of a second half performance to win this round, isn't it? Iago with the throw. Gilmore brings it down. Kasun is in behind here. Can he find a, a cross? He can. Oh, but Zinchenko wins the header. Can we win this header? Ferguson does. And Teka. Wow, wrap your foot around it is what I was trying to do. They deal with that well, Liverpool, in the end. Mikel Marino forward to Mo Salah. They're going to look to score yet more against us. We're already dead and buried, lads. You don't need to do any more. Don't embarrass me. We're not Manchester United, after all. It seems every time I play in this away kit that I absolutely adore, we end up putting in terrible performances and not getting a result. But I love playing in this kit. I'm torn between getting results and watching my guys run around in my favourite strip. 
Mane to take the corner for Liverpool. It's poor though. Keeper came. Kasun heads away. Took the responsibility upon himself there to ensure that no goal was going to be scored by the opposition. A goal still could be scored by the opposition as Neuhaus looks to thread that, thread that through. But uh, Van Ersden does really well to intercept. We'll come away on a counter. We'll look for Randy and Tecker. And he's gotten away from Matthias De Ligt here, who is not quick. Drilling it. Oh, in between everybody and out for a throw-in. Brilliant. We're not good enough on this occasion. Oh, it's a lovely ball by Marino to Salah. They're in for maybe a fourth. Oh, good save by Kudetsky, throwing himself to the right-hand side to deny Sadio Mane. Liverpool looking to really kill us off, as if we weren't already absolutely dead and buried. Mo Salah could cross this, as that could be another corner it is. Might get thrown into the middle. They're going to take it short again. Salah to Zinchenko. Back here to Fabinho. Oh, nice little flick, but Brereton Diaz is in the way. Hello. Counter-attacking opportunity. Oh, counter-attacking opportunity wasted with a loose pass. He just had one more defender to get past, and he was in. Mobile and Salah. Immobile out to Trent. Oh, I was hoping we might have made it 3-1 there. We might actually be having a fourth goal of the game, but just at the other end, Iago does well. Having his shirt tugged to something chronic there, but we'll get this forward. Well, initially looking for Brozier. McGree, play it through to Ben Brereton, looking to get away from Nat Phillips. And doing so, but Allison makes the save. No consolation goal for us in this game, despite all of our efforts. Ferguson delivers. Iago's underneath it, as is the goalkeeper. Five minutes to go. We'll definitely be losing this to nil, unfortunately. Immobile out to Sadio Mane. It could yet be four to nil. Back to Zinchenko. Inside to Sadio. Fabinho, fancy footwork. Immobile, it is to be to 4 nil. Yikes, that's a hell of a strike. They've scored some very impressive goals here, Liverpool. Absolutely unsavable, most of them. Fabinho with a fancy flick. I mean, Immobile just turns and then rifles it. One of the best goal scorers in Europe. Absolutely deadly, Tiro Mobile. And proving it, Liverpool just not even... One step too good. They didn't even get out of second gear in that game. They are miles better than we are right now. I couldn't compete in that game whatsoever. I don't think I want to face the media after that, to be completely honest. Oh, that was that was really rough. That was really rough, lads. Up next for us at the end of the next week will be Southampton at home. Let's hope for a better performance there, shall we? We're still in the top half, though, so let's not complain too heavily was a game that we would have expected to lose. Southampton line up with Rajkovic in goal. Sergi Roberto, Jack Stevens, Schlotterbeck and Vigna. Schalke, Kamara, Lo Celso and Gabby Martinelli on the left for them. Skamaka and Colo Muani up top. A very unfamiliar looking Southampton lineup. Danny Ings back at the club after obviously his move to Aston Villa in real life. Very unfamiliar looking Southampton side. I'm not sure where they are in the league actually. I don't recall actually checking regardless it's the sort of game you want to win at home it's the sort of game you feel like we should be winning at home so well let's go and win it at home shall we oh okay Chalka's quick something to bear in mind Jesus Christ <laughs> Skamaka going for it from distance well wide of the target thankfully but clearly not scared to try something out of the ordinary Southampton immediately having us wondering what on earth they're going to try and do to us in this game. Are they going to try and sprint and race it around the outside? Are they going to be the sort of side to just take pop shots from distance? Are they going to try anything and everything? They could be totally unpredictable in the way that they're going to attack, judging by the opening three minutes. I don't quite know how to approach this. Skamaka. There's space out wide left. Choosing to run into it initially. Schalke. Skamaka again, trying to deny him the chance to get the ball into the middle. Can't get my clearance off, though. We get a block in at least through Iago. And they have a corner here, Southampton. Kasun on near post duty. They might be taking it short. They are taking it short, despite the fact that Iago is there with them. That was certainly a mistake from them. Iago just trying to break away from Giovanni Lo Celso. Look, it's centrally here. Randy and Tech will look quickly, but poorly forward for the runner. Jack Stevens across to... Vigna. I don't. I feel like this is a beatable Southampton team, but there's certainly some quality players in here with Giovanni Lo Celso and 
presumably a well-grown Gabby Martinelli as well. Sergio Roberto's got some quality, although he's probably aging a little bit now. A couple of players I know... Oh, that's lovely movement by Colin Moani. A couple of players I don't really know much about, like the man on the right-hand side of their attack. And Colin Moani I'm not exactly too familiar with either. Especially in real life. Billy Gilmore getting stuck in. We've been, I'd say, better with Billy Gilmore in that centre mid role and Riley McGree out wide. I certainly think it's definitely given us an extra option in attack. So thank you for that suggestion. It's certainly not something I would have considered myself. Putting Riley McGree back out in a winger role. Here comes Jaden Bogle forward from a right wing back role. Christ knows who he was aiming for with that cross. Certainly not where I wanted to play it. And unfortunately, we'll stay at 0-0 25 minutes in, but the ball is flowing quickly from one end to the other. This could be a hell of a breathless game. Substitutes might make the difference in this one, because I think everybody's going to be dead after about 55 minutes, the way that this game's being played tempo-wise. It's Vigna. Everybody's just sprinting everywhere all the time. Colin Mouani. Back inside there to Gabby Martinelli. He's looking to burst past the Sakura. Very nearly... Dangling a leg there. Win this, please, in Tekka. Well, the aim was to head it to a teammate, not straight back to Southampton. Well done, Van Ersten. Oh, right, let's just try and slow it down a little bit, shall we? Just calm this whole thing down, because it has been non-stop for the first 30 minutes. Skamaka. Oh, nicely intercepted by Kasun. Really well done. Get that quickly to Ennis Bardi. And around the corner here, looking for Riley McGree in behind. Get it on his left, and they look to bend it, perhaps. Oh, Riley McGree very nearly sweeping us 1-0 in front. Presumably, if they zoomed in on the keeper, he got a touch on it. We'll have a look. I don't think it was actually on target. Or was it? Oh, it may have been the slightest of touches from the goalkeeper, but it was enough to send it round the post. Looking for Nteka. Not quite finding him. I can't change to anyone to try and get to that ball. We'll get to the loose ball. For Why have you not done anything? Oh! Thankfully, he's run backwards. Oh, my God. I tried to play the pass first time. He's just stood there and gotten tackled. Oh, how to give a man a heart attack. Jesus Christ. Stevens into La Celso. Around the corner to Martinelli. And driving forward. Really nicely. Kwiecki with a save. Please get to this keeps. Oh, Jesus Christ. As if I didn't have a heart attack a moment ago already. I nearly had another one there. Somehow it's nil-nil at half time. Corner for Saints. Five minutes into the second half. They were the better side, you'd say, in the first... Oh, that's a lovely turn by Gabby Martinelli. The, the better half, the better team in the first half. Deary me, or could save by Kroletsky. Stumbling to get my words out, stumbling to get my tackles in. It seems like we gave so much in that first half against Crystal Palace that we've had nothing to give in any game since. We used all of our potential game-winning ability in that fixture to not get the win... And now we've been running on empty since. I mean, Liverpool were just a cut above. Look at Riley McGree on the run. Any body will look for him. It's not the best of balls. Liverpool were a cut above and Southampton have just been dangerous. Constantly throughout this game. Really hard to play against as well. Not quite had that killer touch in front of goal the same way that Liverpool did. But certainly they've had a lot of possession play and built really nicely. But as we mentioned, they've got a lot of quality in this team. A lot of quality with Giovanni Lo Celso and Gabby Martinelli and Sergi Roberto, etc. They... Oh, that's poor. They know what they're doing, these players. And they know how to win, crucially, as well. Thankfully, though, they're not winning. But they certainly still look like the side that might. Forward nicely to Bardi. I'll look for Anteca there. And out wide here is Ben Brereton, fresh off the bench. Standing the ball into the middle. And there's Jaden Braff, fresh off the bench. Heading it wide. The two substitutes immediately combine. But not for a goal, sadly. But certainly promising. We said in the first half that the game has been played at such a pace that substitutes might make the difference in this fixture. And, well, they very nearly had that prophecy come true right away. Is Ennis Bardi? I might have overplayed that. No, Jaden Bogle. Jaden Bogle. Oh, Brereton! They combine again, but the other way around. It was Jaden Braff, not Jaden Bogle. That put the ball into the middle. And still, the ball won't go in the back of the net for either side. 20 minutes to go. I mean, that really is an immediate impact from the two substitutes, isn't it? One crosses to the other. Nearly a goal. The other crosses back to the first one. Nearly a goal. Someone score! 
Ralph intercepts that nicely. Tech has to come for it. Play it short. Ferguson will look for Bardi. And Brereton again is on the run. Bardi will play it over the top looking for Ben Brereton, who should get there ahead of the defender and has done well. Support is arriving. Braff! There you have it! The substitutes make the difference! We called it right from the first half. But just I'm, just celebrate, mate. You're sprinting backwards and forwards. Just celebrate. Oh, my Lord. Jaden Braff, his first goal of the season off the bench. I mean, you could see the change immediately that both of those players had made to the way that the game was being played in our forward third. Oh, finally a goal in this game and finally one at the right end as well. Let's go. We deserve a victory from at least one of today's three games. This one probably should have been a draw. The one against Palace certainly should have been a victory for us. So to get four points from those games, regardless of which way the results went, I'd say would be about where our performances have been so far this episode and so far this season. I don't know if it's really deserved to get absolutely smacked by Liverpool by four goals to nil, but they were very, very good. And you saw the quality of their finishing. It was absolutely brilliant. Brereton played in. We'll deliver it now looking for... Well, Jane Brough again at the back post, actually. But it's evaded him and it'll fall for Evan Nielsen here. Six minutes to go. A Southampton push for a late equaliser and they may well get one. Itzikura is going to have to chase down Gabby Martinelli here and slow him up. And he's done exactly that. Right, let's see this one through, gentlemen. I am not going to waste possession now. This is the sort of scenario where you just play the ball about, you keep it, you don't let it go, you get the win. The final whistle sounds. We've managed to get the victory thanks to the two substitutes off the bench. Jaden Braff providing more than Kasun has done so far this season on that left-hand side. Rokovic frustrated and disappointed not to have kept a clean sheet, but certainly we have earned that victory with the extra pressure put on by the two wingers coming off the bench. I tended to make just one change out wide, not both. But maybe that's the answer. If we're struggling to get a goal, maybe I need to change both wingers. And maybe we can cut teams apart that way. It certainly worked here. We got the goal. Maybe we could have had more. The keeper made a couple of good saves, but we did have to rely on Kodetsky quite a bit as well. We had to really graft to get that victory against Southampton. We had to really graft to get the point against Palace, even though we just battered them for the majority of the game. Good. Jaden Bogle has now completed his change to right back. So that's him continually growing nicely and apparently with still yet more room for growth too. Let's go. Keep going, sunshine. Grow as much as you possibly can. Caden Clark wants to play a little bit more, but unfortunately at the moment... He hasn't found his way near the starting lineup. Still very, very pleased with our performances today. We are up in seventh. Despite the defeat to Liverpool and only a point against Palace, we are still higher than we were. City have recovered slightly up to fifth, although we are level on points with them. We're a point ahead of Arsenal. Spurs are still only 11th. Chelsea have risen to 13th, but still drawing almost every single game. One win, one draw, seven defeats. So, sorry, one win, one loss, seven draws outrageous and so peculiar for Chelsea to start the season that way we've Manchester City away next but judging by how many fixes we may well have in November in fact there's four games and we'll have to make a decision between City away and Arsenal at home I'll probably sim City away and we'll play the others we'll play the others because Arsenal are the side that are further down the table right that will do us for today for the month of October Four points on the board, four well-earned points as well, and an embarrassing defeat away from home from our big away day. But that's what you expect from a side that are leading the league and flying. But we're having a great season. Who knows what we might achieve this year? Let's not get carried away. One game at a time. I'll see you tomorrow.